Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem starts as follows. We got two objects, A and B, that start at the origin at time equals zero. They each have a velocity. The velocity of A is 10 meters per second at 30 degrees above the x-axis, and VB, the velocity of object B, is 20 meters per second at 45 degrees above the positive x-axis. And they want us to find the velocity vector for A, the velocity vector for B, the velocity vector of B relative to velocity vector A, the position, or I should say displacement of A as a function of time, and the displacement of B as a function of time. So it might help if we make a sketch of what's going on here. So let's draw the xy axis. So here we have the y axis, there we have the x axis, so you can see that we have a velocity vector a, and that's probably not a good enough angle. It's kind of a small angle. Let's make it a little bit bigger. All right. So let's draw a vector. That's probably better. So there's velocity vector a. It makes an angle of 30 degrees with the positive x-axis. And there's velocity vector b, which is a much bigger vector because it's twice the magnitude. So velocity vector b and uh, that makes an angle of 45 degrees. And then they want us to find velocity vector b relative to velocity vector a. So this right here can be defined as vb minus va. And so what we want to do is we want to subtract a negative va, or add a negative va. So va in the negative direction, let's see here, let's use a different color that would look like this. So this here would be a negative velocity vector a. And then if I add those two together, velocity vector b plus a negative velocity vector a. So essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take velocity vector b and add that to a negative velocity vector a, which is the same as velocity vector b relative to velocity vector a. Then I get a vector that looks like this. And so this is v sub b plus a negative v sub a. All right, at least graphically we understand what we're trying to do. So how do we actually accomplish that? Well, we need to find the x and y components of each of the vectors. So let's start with vector a. So vector a is going to be equal to the magnitude of the vector, va, times the cosine of 30 degrees, and that would then be in the i direction, plus the magnitude of vector a times the sine of 30 degrees, and that would be in the j direction. So in this case, the magnitude of a would be 10 meters per second, so that's 10 meters per second multiplied times the cosine of 30 degrees, that's in the i direction, plus 10 meters per second, times the sine of 30 degrees in the j direction. And so ultimately we can say that the velocity vector a is therefore equal to the cosine of, that's uh, 8.66, 8.66 meters per second in the i direction. That would be plus 5 meters per second in the j direction. So there's our first velocity vector. Now we can do the same for b. So velocity vector b <clears throat> is equal to, the magnitude is 20 at a 45 degree angle, so that would be, uh, let's see here, 707, 14.14, that would be 14.14 meters per second in the i direction, so it's 20 times the cosine of 45 degrees, and the cosine of 45 degrees is 0 0.707, twice that is 14.14 times 10, and so we get the same for the y component, so that would be 14.14 meters per second in the j direction. And so there's our velocity vector b. Now we want to find velocity vector b relative to velocity vector a. So now we take v sub b minus v sub a. That's going to be equal to 14.14 meters per second minus 8.66 meters per second in the i direction, that would be plus, and that would be v sub b, which is 14.14 meters per second 
minus 5 meters per second, and that would be in the J direction. And let's see here, 14.14 minus 8.66, 5.48. So that would be equal to 5.48 meters per second in the I direction, and that would be plus 9.14 meters per second in the J direction. Let's see if we have that graphically about right. And it looks like, yes, we have a higher, higher value for the Y direction, not quite as high for the X direction. So it kind of matches what we have on the graph. Now we need to find the displacement vectors. So the displacement, hmm, how do we do that? That would be integral of the velocity, wouldn't it be? So if, in essence, S, the, the position vector, would be equal to the integral of the velocity vector dt. And so essentially, if we take the integral of the velocity vectors, we will get the position vectors. And since we have a constant in the i direction and a constant in the j direction, when we integrate that, we just simply add the constant t. And now realizing that we start at the origin at time equals 0, we don't have a, a, a constant of integration. So therefore, we can say that the, uh, the displacement vector for particle A is going to be equal to the integral of V sub A, dt, and that's going to be the integral of the components. Well, I don't have to write integral sign anymore. We can just work it out. And so the integral of a constant times dt is t, so we get 8.66 meters per second times t in the i direction, Ooh. plus 5 meters per second times t in the j direction. And so this is our displacement vector a as a function of time. Because now after 0 seconds, of course that will be 0. After 1 second, it will be this plus this in the i and j direction. After 2 seconds, we multiply times 2 and so forth. We do the same for v sub b. And so we have the displacement vector s sub b is equal to the integral of v sub b dt. And of course that will again be simply v sub b with the t's added. So that would be 14.14 meters per second times t. Now notice you might say, well, wait a minute. Aren't the units meters, not meters per second? That is true, but the unit of t is seconds, so seconds would cancel out once we put a time in there. So we're good. Time in the i direction plus um, that would be 14. 0.14 meters per second times t in the j direction. So that's what our displacement vectors for a and b would look like as a function of time. And that is how we do that.